Hello. I'm just wondering if we've got people there. Can you hear me, Erin? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just looking. It's 12.22 and I'm going to speak very quickly through my slides for um, the toolkit for inclusion for um, uh, the European Heritage Days Inclusive Events Toolkit. So this is something that has been developed um, by myself at, at Stores Open Days and um, also the National Trust for Scotland Heritage Open Days. So we, I work at the Scottish Civic Trust and deliver Doors Open Days um, project. Um, I'm the coordinator. This happens every September um, and it gives you free access to venues and events. Um, and each year we have a different theme or themes that we that we follow. Um, we are part of the European Heritage Days Network. Um, and that looks at um, sharing tangible and intangible heritage. So sharing stories of places and spaces of all different um, groups who call Scotland their home. Um, and we created this toolkit very much um, with the idea in mind of how to make um, it as accessible as possible for people to take part. Um, so we've got, this is just telling you the, the project approach that we took with the, um, we did some desk research um, and public consultation across all of the European groups, um, countries, 47 countries who take part in the European Heritage Days. And we took some case studies based from Scotland and England's programs. Um, so we've developed eight, well, eight project outputs. Um, we, we worked with um, some consultants to put together um, information on inclusion and diversity and community engagement so that it's about reaching groups very specifically. And it's a modu modular toolkit designed to be flexible so that you can take one or two themes that are particularly relevant to you. And I'll show you um, this. This slide shows you the, the different um, themes that we have. So we've got working together with groups, working with volunteers, budgeting for inclusion, choosing a venue, reflecting on inclusion, addressing barriers, co-creating events, evaluation. And we also put together a glossary because we're really aware that different um, language is used by different people and by different countries as well. So we put together a glossary of definitions that are particularly relevant and used currently in the UK, um, but they may not be relevant across other, other European countries. So we're, the, the hope is that this is only the first draft and we can do um, new drafts in the future. Um, so the toolkit is a key piece of groundwork for um, upcoming guidance for 2021's European heritage theme of heritage all inclusive, which will also be one of Doors Open Days themes as well. So um, we are making this as available as possible. It's on both the Heritage Open Days websites and the Doors Open Days websites, as well as um, the European Heritage Days website. So they were the funder for, for the, the piece of kind of cross collaborative work. And this is my nice final slide, which just tells you um, where you can find it. So that's the link on our website, on the Doors Open Days website. Um, this is the link on the Heritage Open Days website. And if there are any questions about it, please, um, please email me. And I'm going to... Uh, just leave that up there. And if there are any questions just now, um, it might be more relevant um, to follow on after Jamie's talk, because Jamie um, is going to follow on from me just now. I'll, sh I'll stop sharing my screen and, and we will make available this, this um, slideshow as well within the resources after the event. So uh, Russell, if you have the um, link to the toolkit handy, um, yes. I'll put it in the chat actually yeah I can do that as well so if there is anybody there who <laughs> to now follow on I'll, I'll hand over to Jamie and then if there are any questions 
put it in the chat or um, Jamie and I might have a minute or two to answer them afterwards. There you go, Jamie, I'm muting now. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you can see my wee presentation. OK, good stuff. OK, so uh, my name is Jamie McNamara. I am the senior project officer here in the Scottish Civic Trust um, uh, overseeing the My Place mentoring program. And it's really, really good to be here today with so many different voices um, in terms of diverse heritage and how um, this program could possibly fit into this. So what is the My Place mentoring program? It's a program, it's a free offering from, from ourselves here at the Trust, and it's helped, it's kind of designed to help community groups to develop their skills and knowledge base. Um, primarily groups that maybe wouldn't have access to the likes of the Central Belt knowledge base, um, you may find it difficult to get to the right person or the right contact within the heritage sector to try and realize their vision of um, their heritage asset or even their town. So we work an awful lot with the, the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation and um, hard to reach areas, remote areas, um, the islands, um, up in the highlands, uh, down in the lowlands and all in between. So what are we doing? We try to, um, as you can see in the screen there, develop skills within the groups to try to empower groups to take on the projects themselves. And um, so they can get then the understanding of how a heritage project works. Uh, it does not need to be a building. It can be a town. It can be a case of trying to upskill people's confidence in uh, governance of how to run a committee, how to run a charity, how to seek good fundraising, how to talk to professionals and to engage with local authorities and that kind of thing. So we can help them with the likes of business plans, uh, preparing funding for funding applications, which can be a bit of a minefield when they're all so, so different and outcomes and indicators change uh, hugely amongst different funders. We can then help them with community consultations, so I can be the go-between between local authorities for the likes of community asset transfers and that kind of thing. And also then, particularly now with COVID, to try to help develop um, audiences and volunteers in a, um, a non-physical way. So using the internet to kind of best, to best reach out to people to, uh, to tell them about your project. So who is eligible? Um, as I just touched on in the first slide, we, we will pretty much help everybody across Scotland. So please do come forward and um, just pop onto our website at Scottish Civic Trust, get in touch with me or Aaron or anybody from the office today. I'm very, very happy to talk with you. My email address there is on the bottom of that screen. But anybody really who, who's having difficulty or who has an idea for a project, an idea could be turning a, a local disused church into a community centre, maybe the uplift of a town, maybe the uplifting of you know shop fronts or trying to develop a heritage app or whatever it may be across the whole gambit of heritage. Um, even like just to raise confidence skill sets, as I said, around you know governance and you know, sifting through the legislation and sifting through all of the paperwork that the funders are requiring. And um, particularly those in the hard to reach outlying areas, as I said, and those with the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation and um, kind of the, the lower economic regions of, of, Gla of not just Glasgow, sorry, of the whole of Scotland. Um, so please do, um, my details are there, give me a call, drop me an email, get in touch with us through our website and I'd be more than happy to talk to you at some stage. And that's me, thank you.